Good morning, Dr. Massey, how are you? I am well, how are you? I'm doing just great. I uh, love the Women's Foundation and want to talk about something that's really exciting that's gonna take place tomorrow that you're participating in. It is the symposium, the virtual leadership symposium that's gonna take place tomorrow at 10 and you're participating in the second session. And yes. that session is why self-care isn't selfish. And so before we talk about the symposium, I just want to tell um, Women's Foundation of a great, for Greater Memphis um, viewers a little bit about you and why you're going to be participating in this panel. So Dr. LaShondra Poindexter Massey is a clinical psychologist. And let me just say, some of us need a psychologist. Every yes, now we and do. Then. And there's nothing wrong with that. And community change agent. She has been licensed as a psychologist for 20 years and has maintained a private practice for 16 years. So tomorrow you will be joined, Dr. Massey, um, Amy Good, who's the publisher of Memphis Health and Fitness Magazine. Yes. Will be a part of the panel with you, as well as Michelle, Dr. Michelle Taylor, who's the director for health services for the Shelby County Health Department. And your moderator will be Melissa Wilkes Donahue. She's the director of Concern EAP. When you were growing up, Dr. Massey, did you know you wanted to be a psychologist? I would not, I did not know to call it psychologist, but I knew that I was very interested in why people did the things that they do. And so I would often ask those questions and I found myself being a good listener and wanting to understand people's problems. So the more I learned to study about that and this field of psychology actually existed and there was a way to dive more into this, I definitely stayed with that track. And so I began studying psychology from the undergraduate level and took it all the way through the doctorate and now 15 years in the game. Oh, wow. And so what do you enjoy most about what you do? What I enjoy most about what I do is seeing the process of change. Um, when I, um, even on my business card, it says, you know, when people get more than help, they get better. So the goal for me is to actually be able to see the change process and be actively involved in helping people reach states of being that are more accomplished and, and getting through the things that are difficult and problematic and knowing that there is better on the other side. Um, and so that ability to be a part of the process to get to that change. Well, you know, as women, we're such multitaskers. We think that we can take on the world and we can be okay taking on the world. How is it important, how important it is, Dr. Massey, for us to prioritize self-care? Um, I am so glad you asked the question in that way that we are able to prioritize self-care. What I have learned is that women, as you said, are multitaskers and they understand that self-care is important. But what happens often is there are so many other things that mm -hmm. are that we are committed to and that we are loyal about and dedicated to. And so we often find ourselves willing to sacrifice that self-care for these other things that are important, not recognizing that we are draining ourselves in the process. That we're not as effective at all of those other things that are important when we are not prioritizing self-care. So that's one of the things I do want us to take away from this talk is that we're able to think about self-care as a priority. It is something that I've got to put at the top of the list of all of those important things that I do, uh, not the one that I'm willing to push back and sacrifice to, uh, to be able to do all those other things. But Doc, sometimes it's just hard. You know, when you're Absolutely. juggling everything, it's just so hard to prioritize you. But what happens, you think, when you don't prioritize well, yourself? Here's what happens when you don't prioritize yourself, right? What, what I often say to, to women is just because you can carry it doesn't mean it isn't heavy. And we mm. start to figure out over time that there's a cost to this heaviness that we've been carrying without properly taking care of ourselves in order to do that. So we find this gradual wearing down over time. And so it's not often immediate. It's, it's not, you know, in, in a moment, but we find ourselves less and less effective um, and then seeking, possibly seeking help at that time where we're at maybe a breaking point. I've had enough. I can't do this or our health fails. Mm -hmm. um, and 
to warn us that we are not okay when we actually thought that that we were. So being better at recognizing that gradual wear down that's happening um, so that we are, are not just looking at our ability to get it, push it, made it, check one more thing out the box, but recognize that if we're doing that at the expense of self and well-being, then we haven't accomplished very much. So tomorrow when women and maybe some men are tuning in to the symposium, what would you like for them to take away from this panel discussion? What I most want them to take away from this panel discussion is this concept of we need to have self-care as a lifestyle. Many of us find ourselves using self-care as, as a reward. After I finish everything else, I'll get to that thing. Um, if maybe it's a massage or getting my nails done. And we wanna think about that differently, that our wellness needs to be something that we're committed to every day and seeing self-care as a part of our mental health care and what we do to just maintain ourselves effectively, as we were talking about, to do all the things that you want to do. So I want us to take away some very specific strategies to introduce self-care as a lifestyle for us. Well, let me just say thank you for not giving away everything that we should do and saving a little bit for that symposium tomorrow. And it's not too late for people to sign up for the symposium. Absolutely. The Women's Foundation website, right, Dr. Massey? That is correct. That is correct. We definitely want you to still take this opportunity to get signed up. Right. And it's only $100. And that $100 also gives you access to what's coming up on April 28th. And that's the, the 26th annual tribute luncheon for the Women's Foundation, and they do such incredible work. I've been a fan of the Women's Foundation um, for 20 plus years, and Ruby Bright is a rock star. Absolutely. So, so she's a right rock star. And so raising money for the Women's Foundation to do the programmatic work that they're doing in this community to help women and to help families is so key. So Dr. Massey, thank you so much for this interview. We're going to upload it to Facebook so people can hear just a little bit of what you're just a little bit. Just a little bit. We didn't give it all away <laughs> um, tomorrow. So, Dr. Massey, thank you so much. The panel that Dr. Massey will be participating in tomorrow and her panel discussion is that starts at 1125. And it's why self-care isn't selfish. Yes. Dr. Yes. LaShonda Poindexter Massey, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. Look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Thank you.